It is that time of week again, which means I am filming my weekly YouTube question and answer. If you're new to my channel, this is something that I do weekly where I take the previous week's questions and I go ahead and I put them into their own dedicated video. See, this way I can actually go through and comb through and find what I think are the most thought-provoking and interesting questions, but also those that just might be good ideas for future videos. Now, today I'm somewhere super special. I'm sitting in the Thrive Market kitchen because, believe it or not, they are about an hour from where I live, so it worked out great. So I was here shooting some content, and they were generous enough to allow me to use their kitchen for today's filming so I didn't have to do it from the front seat of my car. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through last week's videos, list them off, and answer some of the questions as we go. You're tuned into the Internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. There's new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. All right, so the first video was Stop Buying Expensive Mayo. Here's how to make it cheap. Just like the title implies, this was all about how to make mayo from scratch. Okay, like you can go out and you can spend like $11, $12 in some of this mayo, or you can just make it yourself, just some really basic ingredients, and it's ultimately the best keto fat that you could probably get. So the first question comes from Jason Simpson. He says, how much does that make and how long will it last in the fridge? It makes a good amount. That made about 12 ounces, and it'll keep in the fridge. If you keep it, you can put it in another, like an old mayonnaise jar that you washed, and it'll stay in the fridge for at least a couple of weeks. Uh, Rico Ramirez says, great video, thanks. One question, how many calories are in the mayo that you made in this video? Generally going to be about the same no matter what. Uh, adding that little bit of avocado that I did to this particular batch added maybe like a half a gram of carbs to a single serving, but you're generally talking like one tablespoon is going to be about 90-ish calories. Uh, Not of this world asks, I don't understand about adding the oil in so slowly because I've, I read that when I was making mine a few days ago. But since I didn't have a stand mixer, I blended everything and it still came out fine. I'm wondering if it's still okay to blend or if there's a reason that it's bad. Um, you might have gotten lucky because the couple times that I've tried blending it in a, an emulsion blender is it com completely clumps up and gets really broken. It's all about kind of keeping the protein from getting denatured. So you might have just gotten lucky. I don't know if you've tried it again since. But uh, BHO by Jill says, how long does it last in the fridge? And if you can't use it quick enough, can you freeze it? So yes, it's going to last a couple weeks. And yeah, you can freeze it. The hard part is, is once it defrosts, it might separate. So you're going to want to defrost it in the fridge, so not defrost it at room temp. Uh, also, you don't want tomain poisoning. Uh, Adventurous One says, uh, will someone please explain what is wrong with pure olive oil? I've noticed that most keto gurus don't use olive oil, yet studies, it has, studies show it has a lot of benefit to heart health. Olive oil is great stuff, okay? but it is a uh, specific solo fat. So what I mean by that is it's a monounsaturated fat. So it has a lot of ability to end up becoming denatured, uh, which again, is not a bad thing. It just can, if, if you're gonna heat with it or anything like that or cook with it, it can disrupt it, it can break it down. So olive oil is awesome. You just wanna make sure that you're using it, drizzling it on top of things, not things that are super scorching hot or cooking with it. All right, the next video, what's well, kind of funny, it was called Basics of Fat Loss, Simple Science That You Can Use. Kind of funny because it really wasn't that simple. It was pretty complex, and I saw that in the feedback, but it was, uh, it was kind of interesting. But anyway, very good but, uh, video that breaks down exactly how it overall works in your body in terms of hormone-sensitive lipase and whatnot. Uh, Sana Amir says, Dear Thomas, I just really admire your study, but I'm very much confused about the role of beta blockers. I've been consuming them for the last 15 years, and I think they've resulted in slowing down my metabolism my efforts to lose fat and put on muscle at the same time. Um, looking forward to an expert's advice. So beta blockers, there hasn't been a lot of science or studies that show that it has an effect on fat loss in a negative way. But yeah, it does block adrenaline, which could very well blunt your fat loss effect. There's just not a lot of studies to show that. So everything that I say here is going to be kind of just hypothesized, but it would make sense, right? Uh, ADOG1111 says, question, if I'm taking beta blockers for hypertension, is keto not going to work for me? No, keto is absolutely going to work for you. It's not going to completely block norepinephrine and epinephrine. It just blunts it. Uh, you know, people take them for hypertension because it makes it, you know, your blood vessels constrict. It's not constricting them all the way to where you're not having blood flow, right? It's just trickling it down a little bit more. Uh, Freak Wiffle says, how do I activate those hormones to start the hormone-sensitive lipase, which breaks down fat? That's the real question. Exercise, fasting, a little bit of the ketogenic diet, those are the kind of things. High-intensity interval training, those all activate that AMPK that's going to make it so that you can activate hormone-sensitive lipase and get lipolysis to kick into gear. Uh, Sheila G says, the fatty acid breakdown going into the liver explains why my glucose can rise when fasting. Yes, that's exactly right. It's called peripheral insulin resistance. So when you fast, your glucose will, will rise simply because uh, your body's utilizing fats as the main fuel source, so the glucose isn't really being used, so it flows around through your bloodstream at a little bit higher rate. Uh, the next video was measuring the effect of keto and fasting on fat loss, a simple formula. 
So this video was really cool, cutting edge stuff, talking about the glucose ketone index, or GKI, which is the ratio between ketones and glucose, meaning that it's not just about what your ketones are at, what millimoles they're at, but it's also about the division between the ketones and your glucose levels, and that's what really matters. So this video explains the whole formula, very simple formula, and gives you the breakdown. Also, big shout out to Keto Mojo on this one, because they, uh, they did sponsor that video, because they're the only FDA approved meter that's like truly legit, and actually FDA approved for that stuff. Uh, the new Brazy 999 says, what's your thoughts on coffee and mTOR suppression if taken after a workout? Will coffee slow down muscle growth? No, I mean, so coffee will improve autophagy, but it doesn't automatically inhibit mTOR. Uh, if you're having protein with your coffee, then you're having kind of a simultaneous autophagy effect, but it's all your goal. I would recommend splitting up your workouts to where some days you have coffee and then don't eat for a couple hours, and some days you eat right after your workout. Just split it up so you get the effect of both. Uh, Luke Airborne says, is cordyceps and chaga coffee good for this stuff just like actual coffee? Honestly, I'm a big fan of cordyceps. I mean, I talk about it all the time. Huge boost in ATP production, which is therefore going to help all kinds of different fat loss approaches and hormone sensitive lipase and, and everything like that too. But when it comes down to like, helping your body utilize fuel sources, like, I think it's great. Uh, Bscribs88 says, how do you tell after a while on keto when your body becomes fully fat adaptive? Well, actually, uh, GKI is a good way to do it. Okay, that lower ratio, that lower number, is going to tell you that you're in a deeper keto state and your body's fat adapted. But ultimately, I mean, six, eight, ten weeks, you're going to get pretty fat adapted anyway. But you'll tell just because your body, I mean, you just feel more energized. You feel like your endurance improves. You feel like your mental capacity improves. There's a lot of buy signs. Uh, Zach Payne says, hey, Thomas, I was thinking about getting creatine. I've heard that creatine monohydrate is best on keto. But someone told me creatine monohydrate bloats you, and I've watched videos saying that bloating prevents weight loss or slows it down on keto. What are your opinions? I don't think bloating slows down weight loss. It all depends on what's happening. With creatine, it's just water retention. So yeah, you can expect to see a small degree of water retention, but if you're using a good quality creatine, it's going to be at the intracellular level, and it's going to act like sort of like a potassium draw where it's actually going to increase the volumization of the muscle. So it's only going to spill over and make you bloated and puffy if you do too much. So maybe like two grams of creatine with your post-workout drink or just throughout the course of the day. Uh, Franz Wiebe says, hey Thomas, great video and love that formula. Just a question, uh, when would you measure GKI? After or before your workout or in the middle of training? Love your work, bro. Franz, uh, measure as much as you possibly can. It's the only way because honestly, if you were to measure right now and then measure five minutes later, you'd have a starkly different reading. The body is weird in how it processes ketones. It processes ketones in batches, and we're not in like a pressure chamber where our blood is just going at even pressure all the time. We're going to have surges of ketones, surges of glucose. So you want to try to do what you can to just measure consistently throughout the day and really compare apples to apples. Like post-workout one day, then the next day post-workout, but also throughout the other times of the day so you can cross-reference. It just it makes more sense to get you a more concrete answer. Uh, Vince D says, does the Mojo strip measure both at the same time with the same strip? No, it doesn't. Unfortunately, that's not really possible because it's two completely different systems and kind of almost CPUs that operate and measure that. Next video was the effect of alcohol on estrogen, best and worst choices. Super awesome video, broke down like which alcohols actually increase estrogen in men and women, and which ones actually have little effect. So it's a couple of options there. Uh, Sohab Salama says, alcohol before bed can disrupt the sleep? Question mark. Absolutely it can. It definitely, it triggers your brain to go into a completely different mode and it messes up your sleep-wake cycle. It messes up your, uh, basically the theta waves that you would normally get into. Uh, Matt Troy says, what about those new keto-friendly wines that are out there? Are those safe to drink on occasion? Yeah, so I think you're talking about like dry farm wines and stuff like that. Um, they're okay. I think they're just still just regular mine, uh, wines that are just extra dry, so they're lower carb content. The fact is, like wines are pretty low carb in general. Uh, and they all have congeners that are all hard to break down. So take it or leave it in moderation. I don't think they're anything that special. Um, I mean, some of them are okay. But Randy Allen says, uh, where does tequila stand in your rating of acceptable alcohol? Well, like the country song says, no, I'm just kidding. It actually, uh, you know, tequila is still pretty clean. So tequila, if it's aged properly, if it's clean, it's going to be okay. It's, I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, I would probably say it's about a 7. Uh, Himanshu Mishra says, when I plan to drink, I usually don't eat and take electrolytes throughout the day. Uh, I drink distilled vodka with no food. Sometimes I take glutathione. Is there anything I'm missing? Uh, you're going to want to eat something like an hour before you actually drink alcohol. Okay, what that's going to do is that's going to at least give you something to help absorb. If you go fasted throughout the day and then drink, that's just asking to be, well, you'll be a cheap date. I guess you get that. Uh, mm -mm says, thanks, Thomas. Uh, this is a topic I needed and will benefit from. How about a sliding scale of drinks that are friendliest for keto and IF? Everclear, whiskey, and vodka on the top, then red wine, then lighter beers, then followed white wine? 
uh, followed by dark beers and sugary mixed drinks, you know, you're pretty rock solid. I would just add, so Everclear to start, I would say vodka, triple distilled vodka, quadruple distilled vodka. Then I would probably cut it down to uh, tequilas, gins, then move into the whiskeys, uh, then red wines, white wines, lighter beers, dark beers, and then brandies and things like that. A-H-I-M-S-A says, wine, too much sugar, red or white? Please talk about it. Thanks, Thomas. Your videos are always so helpful. Uh, yeah, I kind of answered this one already. Dry red or dry white, you're going to be okay. Just limit it to three or four ounces. Don't go crazy on it. There is a good amount of sugar and alcohol in general. we got to just control. Next video was five unusual things that break a fast. You know, this video crushed. Like, it's breaking the internet again, which is awesome that we're having more of these. But five unusual things that break a fast. So this was talking about like weird things like toothpaste and branched chain amino acids. Not saying that you absolutely can't brush your teeth while you're fasting, but I wanted to get into some detail because so many people have asked. You have to absolutely go back and watch this video. Uh, so Noah Gordon says, what about fluoride in your tap water that doesn't get filtered in the Brita? Yeah, so a lot of people talk about that, a lot of comments about that. So a lot of studies have shown that there's a lot of fluoride in water, sometimes more fluoride in a glass of water than will be in the average serving of toothpaste. So does that break a fast? Amazing question, because the fluoride technically causes an insulin spike. So I would just filter your water the best that you can. Uh, a lot of fluoride in our water is a big problem. It's not good for us at all. So I would try to avoid that either way. Uh, Janet Lynn Davis com says, green tea and coffee has antioxidants. Are those okay? Yes. Uh, so they do have antioxidants. They're not concentrated like you get in a high dose vitamin C. So you're fine. JB says, how about thyroid meds in the morning? Always take your meds. My videos are not supposed to be any substitute for health advice or medical advice. And I can't tell you what to do with your medication. That's up to your doctor. But it's not going to mess up your fast, I can tell you that. Uh, but Duhen says, does clove break a fast? Depends how much. I would say maybe an eighth of a teaspoon that you might put in some coffee would be fine. Uh, Shaka Barinda says, does blood pressure medication break the fast? Same answer, take your meds. Um, electrolytes, do they break the fast? Uh, as long as they're not sweetened with like a high amount of erythritol, but like maybe a little bit of stevia, uh, you're good to go there. Uh, Ditagia DGE says, does... Um, do pill capsules break a fast if they have gelatin? What about taking herbs like ashwagandha, ginseng, rhodiola? Will those break your fast? I would say the herbs are probably okay. There's no real insulin spike. If there's a gelatin casing, like an actual real gelatin casing, you could say that it could break a fast. But again, probably just best just to keep your vitamins and minerals till the end of your fast. I mean, if you're going to fast, keep it pure, keep it clean. It's easier that way anyway. And I think that that's just going to make a big difference for you all in all. So that's it. That wraps up today's Q&A, and I hope I answered some of your questions. Again, please don't be offended if I didn't answer your questions. We get literally thousands that come in each week, so if yours was selected, congratulations. I try to, re, uh, try to cycle through and get as many good ones as I can, but that's that. And again, big thank you to Thrive Market for letting us use their studio kitchen today, and keep a lookout for all the content that's here to come from my channel and also content from Thrive. All right, see you guys soon.